Hi there, we've come to Bristol today. Um, we're just about to head over to the Natural History Unit at the BBC to speak with Ed Charles, who's one of the top producers at the BBC. Um, and we are going to have a chat with him about his work on his new series, One Planet. Hi Ed. Um, Hi. So it would be great if you could just talk us through a little bit about your job and your background in natural history filmmaking. Uh, yeah, sure. So I'm a, I'm a producer um, specialising in wildlife mm -hmm. television. I'm at the BBC Natural History Unit and um, I generally, I suppose, I am a producer on sort of the, the larger scale, um, slightly bigger productions um, that we do. So, you know, things without a presenter, like three years in the making, that kind of thing. Yeah, okay. And you've just finished shooting on One Planet. Yes. So it's... It's one planet, it might be called Planet Earth 2. We're not quite sure, uh, okay. it's all changed at the moment, but okay. who knows. Um, but yeah, um, filming finished. We, we finished at the end of last year and um, we're now in the edit, which is, is kind of the fun bit, really. I mean, obviously going off and, and going around the world shooting is, is great. And you know, it sounds yeah. very glamorous, but when you go away, you know, five, six weeks on the trot and you do that six, seven times yeah. a year, it's pretty exhausting. Yeah. But um, you know, I'm not gonna complain, it's amazing. And how many producers will be on something like One Planet, Planet Earth 2? Uh, so the series I'm working on at the moment is it's actually a little bit different. So we, we have got one producer doing one show each, which is quite unusual. Okay. Yeah. Um, normally, as a producer, you do a couple of um, episodes uh, in each series. So a series might have three or four producers. Mm -hmm. But on, on the one I'm on, we've got one show each. And that was done very deliberately. You know, specifically because um, it meant that we could really focus on one episode and just put your heart and soul into it, okay. which is which has been great. So, which was the show that you were involved in? I in have made the deserts show. Yeah. Okay. So, um, well, I say I've made it. I'm, I'm making it at the moment, okay. um, which has been great. You know, if I'm honest, deserts wasn't my first choice, but it's been fantastic. Um, What's it like as an environment to shoot in? Is it pretty brilliant? Tough? Yeah. No, it's brilliant. Yeah. I mean, it is. It sounds very stupid, it's very hot. Um, yeah. There are a few deserts around the world which are quite um, politically unstable, should we say. So, you know, we found a fantastic story in Niger in Africa. Um, brilliant story, but we, I just, I couldn't sanction a trip there because we would have needed armed guards and the risk of like kidnapping and beheading and stuff like that was yeah. quite, it's just not worth it. But. Yeah. Um, the deserts around the world that are nice and safe and um, they're just brilliant places to work because wildlife filming you, you often lose you know at least a third of your time to bad weather mm. um, you know things it's generally like to be filmed well, in yeah. really nice light and in the desert it's pretty much always blue sky so <laughs> yeah. it's great yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was good and in terms of the actual stories that you go and the sequences that you have in your head where are those ideas born where do you get them from how do they Develop. So that's the the research part, which is that's that's the first, the pre-production, I suppose yeah. you call it. So for the first however many months, depending on length of production, we just sit down <coughs> and we just research stories. We watch films that have been made before. We um, find out who the lead scientists are working in a, a particular field, like um, like desert ecology. Um, you work out what the key species are, you, and mm. you know the. The main thing that we're looking for is new stories. That's mm. that's sort of the holy grail of, of all wildlife filmmaking yeah. is trying to find something new, which as yeah. you know I'm sure you can appreciate, is harder and harder and harder. The more TV is put out there, say, the more things have been done. And run out. Yeah, we're we're not running out yet. I mean, certainly the ratio of new stuff is is getting smaller, but you can also do things that have been done before but in a much fresher, right. newer way. And I guess it, as well with all the new <laughs> technology with drones and things like that you can film more stuff than you could yeah. 10 years ago and, and so even if it's the same story you can get different angles yeah absolutely uh, and I think that's one of the things that's really helped in in the series I'm working on we we've kind of come out as there's been a bit of a revolution in technology so like you say things like drones have just been amazing they've revolutionized the other way we can mm. do a lot of stuff and the filming the tools we use to, to get the shots um, have advanced so much that you can bring a totally new feel to it. But yeah, it's the science community is um, 
is our biggest ally really yeah. you know without scientists and contributors giving us information helping us get the shots and putting us in the right place we would be scuppered and you go so we're going to do deserts and these are the sorts of things i want to do and yeah so find me some uh, stuff to yeah do. absolutely uh, to start with you just cast the net as wide as possible and yeah. just anything new anything cool um, whether it's been done before or that hasn't been done before, any, you know, as I say, anything new to science is, mm. is fantastic. Mm. And then you just sort of whittle it down from there, you hone it down. So you know, the stories that I've been looking at are ones that are visually compelling, because you can get amazing stories yeah. that on paper are like, wow, that's incredible, but you can't translate it mm. to film, to mm. a visual medium. Um, so that you know, can sometimes be disappointing, because you get a yeah. great story and you have to cast it off. Um, other times, if it doesn't work with your narrative, you know, if it doesn't tell you anything about living in a desert, for example, then it doesn't really have a place in the film. Okay. Do you ever get behind the camera? Yeah, I, I do shoot every now and then. Yeah. Um, so I, I actually started off thinking I wanted to become a cameraman, mm. um, as I guess many people do. I guess there's a lot of producers who started off thinking they want to be presenters or cameramen. Yeah. I always thought I wanted to be a cameraman, so I, I did uh, a year as a camera assistant, okay. um, did a, a degree or a master's in, in um, wildlife photography. So yeah, I do a bit of shooting, yeah. always second camera, because it kind of takes the pressure off. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. want to do uh, first camera because I know I'd mess it up. But yeah, I do <laughs> you know, things like time lapses or second camera, you know, shooting wides whilst a cameraman's going in on the yeah. behavior, that kind of thing. Okay. And that's really helpful um, because for a behavior that only happens very rarely, mm. uh, it means you've got two cameras shooting the same thing. So you're sort of doubling your output, okay. really. Yeah. yeah. That's really interesting. That's great. Thanks. I think that's it. All right. Thank you very much. No, thank you.